Just know that. All right, you guys, let's get a little bit serious. I really do need that coffee because it is very late and I'm up at this ungodly hour of 1.30 a.m. But I said I was gonna be consistent, so I am. Here I am with another video. So I was sitting back on the couch the other day thinking about what I wanted to film for this video. And I wanted to kind of take it back and reminisce the pregnancy stage. If you're new to this channel, I am Colors once again, and I am a mother of two, two under two to be exact, and I'm still in struggle mode, so trying to get my life together so when I was thinking about my pregnancy journey there was a lot of things that I did not expect to happen a lot of things kind of took me off guard and left field and I thought I should express those things to you because no one was really talking about these type of things i feel like you get your traditional oh i'm in pain oh i'm throwing up oh i am sick i'm not gonna talk about none of that that's wraps over here what i am gonna tell you about is the stuff that i woke up and i was like really this is how the devil gonna work today that's what i'm gonna talk about so if you are interested in knowing what those things are i think i have about a good 15 didn't count we're here doesn't matter but if you want to hear what those things are just keep on watching but the first thing that i did not expect to happen to my life is my areola stretching why nobody didn't tell me that i swear when i was pregnant I don't remember at what point it happened. It had to be definitely later in the game, maybe around that six, seven months, maybe the very beginning of the third trimester. But I swore I got out the shower one day and ran past that mirror and was like, something's different. Now, I do definitely think it has a lot to do with whatever your breast was like before. I didn't really have big ones. I had a little small ones. And now I woke up one day and it was like half the size of my boob. And I was just kind of like, what's up? Like, why nobody didn't tell me that my areolas would be a different size? Now, I knew my boobs were gonna grow, but I'm talking about the actual circles, the dark circles on your chest that creates your nipples. Yes, child, that. That had stretched like three, four times the size that it was before. And it never really went back. So, that's a tad bit of information. Hold on. The next thing that was very disrespectful to my life and no one told me about it was yeast infections. Apparently it is very, very common and I got it both times with both pregnancies to receive yeast infections. I don't even think or recall me getting yeast infections before. If you don't know, ladies, it is not a big deal to get a yeast infection. It's not life changing. It is very common. You can actually get a yeast infection from wiping too much with toilet paper. So like you can just get a yeast infection from whatever. But I was very surprised to learn how common that you could get a yeast infections during pregnancies. And some women even get it multiple times during one pregnancy. And I even heard of a case where a woman got up to I think five or six different times and when you generally get it they they give you a cream or a pill so it would get knocked out in usually like less than a week maybe about three to five days start taking the medication but I did not know that you might as well start expecting it because like I said I got it both times with both pregnancies I only got it one time no I think my first time I got it twice and my second time I got it once but yeah got yeast infections so just prepare girl just prepare the next thing that i had to learn was that my butt is no longer my own and i can't go to the bathroom so basically you get constipated and constipation is very 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 common when you're pregnant all of a sudden you can't go 
now i do notice it that it happens generally or for me um more so toward in the beginning of the pregnancy maybe in the first like two months or so two or three months maybe uh i don't know child you think i know off the bat but yeah usually in the first couple of months you usually struggle i would go pee all the time but as far as going number two backed up child back up the next thing and you can tell i am not even being over dramatic this one was the most annoying thing out of them all i swore this threw me for a loop i thought i had medical issues and that is that your hormones change so much that you can possibly become musty i was musty during certain times of my pregnancy with both of them like what's up your pH balance is doing a lot. There's a lot of shifting, a lot of like collaborations going on in your body that it is very possible that you will become musty. I even tried to start doing some natural deodorants, you know, cause I'm pregnant. I gotta do the right thing. I gotta go natural, you know what I'm saying? And none of it worked and I swore I could take three or four baths a day. And I swear within 20 minutes from taking a bath, musty again and i'm a person i love my perfume and i love my scents i love my bath and body works i have a scent to go to sleep in a scent to work out in and a scent to go out in in a chilling scent and just so you know i'm not lying <laughs> i stocked up okay yeah i love my scents and that's not even all of them and the fact that i could not get rid of my mustiness was a problem for me so the only thing i could do was take a bath i went back to the regular deodorant and eventually one day it goes away i'm so sorry about it your body goes through so much but yeah the next thing i did not expect was hot flashes okay i think this is definitely something in the beginning because i definitely mentioned this in my big fat positive videos and stuff like that but one of the signs that i did notice in the early beginning stages of pregnancy was hot flashes always consistently being hot that was one of the telltale signs of hey i might be pregnant because i always was hot and it mostly happened at night but it just hit you like a ton of bricks and you just can't sleep no more because of it so it's an annoying one but trust me it does not last long another thing that i did not expect to happen and it has a lot to do with your sense of smell the thing that you usually love to the most to eat it's a good chance that that might be your least favorite and it's to the point to where the smell of it might make you sick so for me it was uh like seafood so i love seafood i am a seafood i'm not going to even say connoisseur because i'm not but i absolutely love seafood my fish my my crabs my everything i love it so it really bothered me that when i was pregnant the smell of any seafood would make me sick and i even remember i was like six weeks eight weeks pregnant and i went to seafood place for my birthday and i was able to eat seafood but i swear towards the end of my stay there it was wrapped i was so sick i was so tired but you know i kept putting on you know what i'm saying i had to put on a good face if you haven't seen that video i'll try my best to remember to link it down below next kind of more so misconception that i've learned within my pregnancy um situation is that sleeping on your back is not more comfortable you have this thought in your mind like okay when it comes to sleep i can sleep on my side and my back and it's like no ma'am like you can try it's cute but it's really not what you think it is so yes you can sleep on your back but you're gonna have to like lay on a mound of pillows and lean up halfway so especially towards the end of your pregnancy like sleep was not comfortable for the longest time in both my pregnancies even sleeping on the slot side isn't so comfortable because it's a lot of pressure on your stomach so you kind of have to lay on either your side to back it depends obviously what type of sleeper you are but i think it's definitely 
a huge misconception even when you get bigger the baby crushes you and you can't breathe it's a lot <laughs> the next thing that i had to learn within my pregnancy is that there's a chance that you will not see your mucus plug i know you hear that all the time well like, oh you know you lose your mucus plug i am really close to meeting my baby and i can tell you i searched high and low for my mucus plug and i swear i never seen him I never met, we never had a conversation, we never even talked, we never even seen each other, I don't know what it looks like. The first time I had my um, first baby, um, the water broke here. I did see a little blood, but I didn't see no mucus or anything like that. And the second time my water broke in the hospital. So I did not see her, she did not see me. Don't always look for it or feel like you have to see it because there's a chance you won't even meet each other. The next thing that I learned in my pregnancy journey and I debated a while if I even wanted to mention this because I don't want to feel like or other people to feel like because of the times and everything that's going on that that is the reason why I mention this and if you have followed me for a long time you know for a fact that that isn't the case because this is my real life this is everything that I genuinely experienced. So I'm definitely not following trend when I mention this, but I do think it's important for not only women, but black women to look out and be your own advocate. Okay, first of all, this is gonna be a two part in one. For one, I have to learn to be my own doctor in the sense of speaking up for myself, saying yes, saying no to things and, uh, asking for what I want. I feel like more than any other time, and I've been in the hospital a lot, I've never learned this more than when I was pregnant, that you have to be your own advocate, especially for black women. Like, But women in general, for sure during pregnancy, you definitely, definitely, definitely have to be your own advocate because I swear, I think these doctors, especially with the OBs and everything like that, they're so used to people being pregnant that they can be a little bit insensitive or miss a lot of things. So I think that it's very important for you to uh, do a lot of research of issues that you may be having concerns and write them down for sure write them down and run them past your doctor that includes like possible treatment options but the main thing that I want to say for this part and this is part two of it is that how much there is a lack of concern empathy and care when it comes to black women and the healthcare industry, I guess you could say. Well, pregnant black women, I should say. I don't even have to convince you because there are many scenarios, situations, articles, videos, all kind of things that talks about black women not being cared for in the way they should be. And I've learned that a hard lesson of that um, around my 19 weeks in my first pregnancy, and I will try my best to drop that link to that video because that that was a tough moment of insensitivity um, when it came to my pregnancy. I'm not going to try to go too deep into it, but for sure, uh, women in general, be your own advocate, but especially black women, you may have to fight a little bit harder with these doctors and for your baby, even before your baby is born. And that is so sad and so sickening that I even have to say that, but it is a real thing. There are a lot more babies even dying because of the lack of concern because I guess there is a thing they kind of think that we're not as much in pain than what we say we are. So I hope this makes sense but it's just really like an undermining thing. I don't know trust me even comment down below if you have experienced what I'm talking about. It's so many situations that I've been through in my pregnancy when it comes to these doctors. They just feel like we're just complaining more so they don't look into our concerns a lot more. In turn, there's a lot of innocent babies that are dying because of it and it's it's really sad. If you don't believe me, just do your own research. It is something to note so that you will, won't be caught off guard. But I'm gonna kinda move into another aspect of it 
because another thing that I didn't expect when learning that was about the viability stage. Now, if you have been pregnant, you probably heard about this, but in the process of learning about the lack of empathy, it was very much emphasized and pressed on me how important it was for me to make it to the viability stage, meaning um, make it to 24 weeks of pregnancy in order for them to save my child. It was up to me to be as cautious as possible so that I won't miscarry my kid. And I was reminded of this every week from nine, 19 weeks on up. As sad and depressing as that is, I have never ever heard prior to me going through it that that's what the doctors say to people. And it's not just me, like I had a friend who recently had a baby and they told her the same thing. So I'm not trying to scare nobody, but you know, yeah. <laughs> the next thing I did not ever hear about prior to going through it was about having a weak or shortened cervix. So basically what happens is your cervix, no matter where it is, it's supposed to be rock hard. Nothing can fit through it. It's a little hole like this. And when you get pregnant, nothing's going through there. It should be tight as a rock until it's time to deliver. So when it's time to deliver, it starts to open, 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 open until it's like the 10 diameter. And that's when it's time to have the baby. What happens is when you have a weak or shortened cervix, is that it's a little open or if they put their finger through there they can get it through there or if the baby presses against it it's weak and could possibly deliver so in my case i had a weak cervix that is a whole nother story in itself and the crazy part of this and this main reason why i mention this is because there is not a lot of personal research done on people who have short cervix so generally if you have a short cervix they give you something called a cerclage, which is generally between 11 and I think 13 weeks, I believe. I didn't receive it because my doctor wouldn't do it, but pretty much is they sew up your cervix until it's close to delivery time and then they snip it off. But irritating the cervix could promote you to deliver too, so a lot of doctors don't like to do it because they don't want to cause you to deliver either. It's like a, it could be a double-edged door or it could be a blessing. That's why they do it earlier in stage to where it's not going to affect the baby as much. But there's not a lot of research done on even like the whole cerclage thing and in turn there's not a lot of knowledge by doctors so there's not even a lot of doctors that would even do a cerclage in my case i basically had to go on bed rest till it was basically time to deliver another thing that i had to learn very early in my process and let's sip some coffee before you get cold is that your first prenatal appointment won't be until around the eight week mark. So let's say, hey, boom, I took a pregnancy test. I'm about to call this doctor up and we about to get this thing started. And then once they tell me I'm pregnant, it starts. No ma'am, that's not how it works. Okay, you, you can make an appointment to confirm you're pregnant. So you go there, boom, pee on the stick or even do a blood test. Boom, now you're pregnant. Now I'll see you in about five weeks or something like that. And you'll be like, but I'm pregnant. There won't be no ultrasounds or nothing like that until about eight weeks. And then we can talk about this baby thing then. It's like, and then even when you come back, it's like, I'll see you four weeks from that time. It's like, so underwhelming. But just so you know, it ain't gonna get popping, popping, popping like that. So. Honestly, even if you want to wait and not necessarily jump on the bandwagon to go to the doctor, that's fine too because either way, you're still going to wait the same a lot of times. So I don't know, especially if you're in a situation you don't have insurance like that or money like that, I wouldn't necessarily be running to the doctors. Another thing I had to find out in my pregnancy journey was that you don't get ultrasound pictures like that. May have gotten like three or four pictures like the whole pregnancy. And then I think 32 weeks is your actual last ultrasound. Generally, I think they do it like eight weeks and they do it like 19, 20 weeks is, is the big check for Down syndrome and all that whole stuff. And then you get one at like 32 weeks 
and possibly one in between just in case if there is a little emergency or something like that but yeah you may only get three or four ultrasound pictures and that's it they only do ultrasounds when necessary uh the last thing i'm gonna say and this one's kind of like a bonus one in this one i kind of even got personal a lot of flack for it if you see my first delivery video and that is it's not necessarily a thing every single hospital only allow two people in your room i believe because there's actually some hospitals that will allow how many ever people you want in your room so in my case with my first pregnancy i had about seven people in my delivery room it was like close aunt david of course and the grandparent but um yeah there's some hospitals that actually will allow you to have more so i would suggest don't call because um they might be like no like we don't offer that much but go on like a tour if you are a person that wants even more if, even if you want four people in your room uh, I would suggest going on those little tours, the hospital tours, and ask them in the hospital tour because the people who are up front in customer service or anything like that may not even genuinely know the answer, but they're telling you stuff like they know. No, go on the tour, ask them or whatever about it, and they might tell you, you might be surprised. But yeah, definitely I had like seven people in my room and i swear everyone had their own little issues and their little problems and their little knick-knack things to say about me having people but i just don't understand how people have an issue with people celebrating my baby coming to the world it should be a championship it should be applauded especially every single thing i've gone through my family and close friends knew everything i went through and it was a giant celebration to know that my baby was okay. We can celebrate everything else, but people were like, oh no, I wouldn't have that many people in my room. I'm like, okay, nobody asked you. <laughs> so the only thing was kind of like, they got a little loud from the applaud, which I know at the doctor, but no one cares because you know, it's a whole side note. Go ahead and watch that video, child. But I just wanted to let you know that it is possible some places in a hospital would allow you to have more than two or three people, so. But I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. I hope this video was extremely helpful and insightful for if you are pregnant or maybe this is just like reminiscing on some of the things and you just wanna be like, yes, girl, I remember that. This video for you. So I just wanted to put this out there because you know, your girl ain't trying to get pregnant no time soon. So I ain't trying to reminisce none of this stuff right now, but I am happy I went through. I'm so blessed and thankful of my two baby girls even though it sounds like I went through a lot because I did. Yeah, I guess that's gonna be it. If you had any of these symptoms or even worse or whatever, or maybe you just had a good pregnancy, just comment down below. Let's share our experiences. I definitely love you guys. Like I said, if you're new to this channel, I hope you decide to follow. If you already subscribed, thank you for continuing to support. So I definitely see you guys in the next one.